All right, let's do this. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So today we're doing patch notes, MC compiled 1.16, which just came out like a couple, uh, like a couple days ago. I'm a little late to the party, but you know how it is. For those of you who don't know, MC compile is a programming language for Minecraft Bedrock. But when you compile it, it goes straight to commands. So everything, all the output is commands, and uh, it'll run natively like as an add-on. So uh, it's pretty freaking cool. Uh, so we're going to go over the changes today. Um, there is so much here, so I'm going to just be freaking rapid-firing going through here. So we're going to begin with a really big change that I added. Uh, it's basically functions that can be defined by the compiler. So the compiler itself can start with functions defined, and uh, it already has like all the built-in stuff. And so these functions can do a lot more fancy things than you can do with regular functions. Uh, that along with just a lot of parameterization and templating and stuff like that that you just can't do normally. So the ones that are added right now as of this release, there's two glyph functions, functions which return a character uh, representing like the glyph, like the character on the, the glyph E0 and E1 uh, textures. If you don't know what those are, then just don't worry about it. You got min and max, which return the large, smallest and largest of each number respectively. Uh, we got square root, sine, cosine, tangent, arc tangent, uh, all of those. Those don't have runtime implementations yet, but I am planning on doing that uh, soon. Uh, you've got the rounding functions like round, floor, ceiling. Uh, those those do work in runtime and compile time both. So depending on whether you give them a compile time value or runtime value, they'll uh, they'll act accordingly, which is super cool. And then we all, there's also get value, which will actually return a value that you have defined based on the, t the string that you give it. Uh, this makes metaprogramming just a thousand times easier. The next, the next feature is tests. Now that now MC Compile has automated testing that allows you to define tests, and then when you run uh, slash function test in game, it will run all the tests and tell you if they succeeded or failed. Ad uh, additionally, there's uh, some other debug features that we're going to go over later, but uh, for now, all you got to know is that there's a new command called assert. So you just you make assertions inside the test, and as all the assertions pass, then the test passes. So you can create test cases, and assert also just has a lot of information that makes it easier to tell where the problem's happening and why it's happening. That just helps a lot with debugging and whatnot. Uh, it allows you to ship a product that actually works. Added the, the new unique command, which will make every value in a preprocessor variable. It'll uh, flatten it out to be only unique values. Uh, let's see. Uh, added. I also added preprocessor assertions, so you can make assertions at compile time, and it'll throw. Out, it'll actually throw a compile time error if that uh, goes false. So you can create things like uh, guards, guards in your macros and things like that, and it'll, it'll just work as intended. You'll get a compile time error if you're using the editor. So super, super useful for when you're just trying to write a thing that has more guarantees. That's just mostly what these, these testing and assertions are about. It's just about making guarantees. So you can write code that works, like on the first time, like the first time, and you, and you don't have like other people accidentally breaking it. Dude, it's cold as hell out here. Oh yeah, I added throw as well, so you can throw using an error message. And uh, one of the cool things about it is that it will tell you where the throw statement happened in your source code. So, so if you use throw, you, it'll just automatically. Uh, it's just it's just a nice way of showing an error, and then it will also halt the code where it's going. Same with assertions. So now you can clarify your values. So if you if you write a value out, you can clarify it using the new asterisk operator. It's a multiply, but you know we don't talk about that. But, but when you do that, it, it'll apply to all score holders rather than just all the players. So before, if you were to do like at A, that would do all players in the game. But star will do all players, including the ones that are outside the game. So, so score holders, entities, literally everything. So this is useful for if you wanted to do like a blanket reset or if you're just like, if you're tracking scores of offline, offline entities, offline players, things like that. I added a new feature called auto init, which if you enable it, it will automatically rerun the init command. Uh, every single time you uh, change the project or change the code in some way. So for every build that you make, uh, it'll just automatically rerun it. And that prevents a whole lot of problems during development and like rapid iteration. Uh, and it also allows you to, if you have that in things like Dynamic World, uh, for people who publish to Marketplace, that just helps so much. I, I added a pend and prepend pre to a preprocessor variables, which makes them more viable uh, for use as like arrays and lists or whatever. So you can have a preprocessor variable and you can append items to the end of it. And you can prepend items to the front of it. So that's super useful. I also re-implemented it internally so that it is actually much more efficient and it's not copying the array over every time. So it works more like an actual list, like in a programming language. Uh, I added a new subcommand to the dummy, uh, the dummy command. So it's it's just so you can remove all dummies from the world. I just added that because I needed it. <laughs> if you're writing documentation, like comments and things like that, it, they'll now resolve preprocessor variables at the, the do, uh, the time the documentation is used. So like if you document a function using a comment, uh, and then you, you put documentation before that, it'll, it'll resolve the preprocessor variables before it attaches the, the documentation to the function itself. So that's, that's really, really great, just because comments natively do support preprocessor variables, they just didn't in that case.
So now in, in directives that allow array inputs, so things like dollar sign add, uh, preprocessor subtract, uh, those ones, you can now specify a JSON array. So that's by, done by doing by dereferencing a preprocessor variable that contains a JSON array. Now, if you specify that, it'll treat the contents of the array as separate tokens. So it, someone would call it an inconsistency, but I'd say that it's more convenient than not because you'd have to unwrap and do all the thing, all the cool, uh, just crazy stuff. And making JSON array support just better in general is something that I've been trying to aim for. You can now index preprocessed variables using the uh, indexer operator. So something that has to be clarified about this is that you don't need the dereference operator uh, when you're doing this. So you just specify the name of the preprocessed variable and then you index it. That's because there's a fundamental difference between putting a dereference operator and not putting a dereference operator. And I just uh, and I felt like it was necessary to put like to document or make it consistent somewhere. So when you dereference a preprocessed variable, you're replacing it with its contents. So if you dereference a preprocessed variable and then index it, you're indexing the contents. But if you just index the preprocessed variable directly, you're you're actually accessing and then dereferencing one of its indices. My hands are so dry. Reworks the iterate command. So any existing code. Uh, that uses it will still work mostly, except if you're using JSON. So the thing about this now is that if you specify a preprocessor variable, the actual just identifier, then it will iterate over the elements of the preprocessor variable. But if you if you dereference the preprocessor variable, it contains something like a JSON array, then it'll iterate the array's contents. If you have a, an instance where you're using iterate and then specifying a preprocessor variable, it's going to iterate over the elements of the preprocessor variable now and not the ar JSON array that it contains. So make sure you add a dereference operator there. That was an inconsistency. We just had to just had to address that. So now, when you're defining a decimal uh, and you give it a literal, like you give it a default value, basically, uh, you no longer have to specify precision. And uh, that actually ties into another change that I made, where I made uh, basically all of the internals of MC compiled. I changed the data type that they were using from away from a 32-bit float. So there's it's so much more precise now. So now, when you're actually when you're trying to use values, uh, the precision just does not matter. Uh, it'll always be exactly what you wrote in the source code, no matter what. No floating point errors, no nothing. But I went back and I found a couple of instances where the define command was defining uh, its scores like in weird places as well as some other other things. But now you you can be guaranteed that all of your scoreboard objective add whatever commands will be always in the new init file. So. So you can just look at the init file and everything will be there and uh, it's all consistent. Lots of, lots of consistency about this update, huh? Uh, the uninstall feature now puts the uninstall function in the the root of your functions directory rather than the compiler folder. Uh, this is just to be consistent with the, the init function, which was uh, which is also placed in the root there. All right, for all the operations like add, uh, subtract, multiply, uh, the preprocessor versions of them, uh, let's see. This one's a little bit complicated to explain, but uh, but just hear me out here. When you, when you specify the operands, aka like the second values, uh, to be added to the preprocessor variable, it now loops those operands, uh, it loops the operands to match the number of items in the source. So, so if my preprocessor variable had like three, three source values, and I was adding two source values, it would do like one, two, one. Uh, and uh, that's it would just loop like one two one two one two if I had only two inputs. Uh, I went back and kind of reworked like str friendly, str upper, and str lower. Uh, that was just to make them more consistent. And I also improved the formatting of str friendly. So if it has like capitals and in certain cases, it just just made it overall look better for most inputs. There are some edge cases where where it will still be the original like the old formatting, but overall everything looks better like in general so the init file no longer contains the project name it's just called init that should be consistent with the uninstall function which is just called uninstall i put here it says greatly improved the preprocessor if and i think i think that was because i made it uh like when you're comparing preprocessor arrays and stuff it's uh it's just more consistent it handles more edge cases so that's better when you display a decimal value i don't know how i missed this but um, now when you have a decimal type uh, variable and you display it to the player and it's missing some of its preceding zeros so like 0 0.01 for example it was missing the zero so it would just show a 0 0.1 even though it was supposed to say like 0 0.0001 so so now it handles those cases it adds a little bit of overhead to displaying uh, decimal values but overall your code shouldn't be changed too much and it should add only like a couple more commands of overhead depending on how precise your decimal value is when you do like a compile time uh, operation between an integer and a decimal value, it no longer rounds the decimal value, it actually floors it. So that's more, that's just to be consistent with other programming languages where when the decimal value is converted to an integer, it's floored and not rounded. I don't really know how, why it was like that in the first place, but it's, now it's not. So right now for the next update, I'm already working on like a bunch of features 
uh, that are kind of going to complete the whole marketplace add-on thing. And I'm going to be like really, I'm really starting to wrap up the languages features. Uh, we're going to get some iteration in there. We're going to get, uh, I think I added, uh, there's going to be a bunch of bug fixes. That's for sure. I already found like two uh, and a couple, a couple of other things coming and it's going to be a smaller update. So thank you everyone for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to like my video and subscribe to my channel because apparently it helps with the, the, the stats or whatever. I don't know. I'm not a scientist.